in the spirit of the Olympics, the Philadelphia Eagles are doing a fantastic job of passing the torch to their new generation. Talking all that and more on this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, every day is welcome on into yet another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, your only daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, delivering you five episodes each and every week. Proudly part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And I'm your host, Gino Camilleri, taking you through this Wednesday edition of the show. And today we are talking about passing the torch. Some veterans spoke at camp over the last couple days and had some great quotes about how they are doing their part in trying to pass the torch to the new generation and set up the culture and the future for success in Philadelphia. As well, we are talking about the guys behind Saquon Barkley, Will Shipley, Kenneth Gainwell. How do they fit into this rotation at running back? And and in the season of the Olympics in 2028, just four short years from now, we are going to have football in the Olympics, flag football, how the NFL can really take that opportunity to continue to expand the league on a global scale. But first, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Sadly, being here in Denver, Colorado, Lou living in Buffalo, neither of us get to cover Eagles training camp and actually go down there as part of the credential media. So we have to live vicariously through the Eagles beat reporters and some of the mainstream media that does get to take advantage of their opportunity. And somebody who is sponsored by FanDuel, who also sponsors us here at the Lockdown Eagles podcast and the entire Lockdown Podcast Network, Kay Adams of the Up and Adams show was at Eagles camp on Tuesday. And she spoke to two people in particular that had two quotes that in the spirit of the Olympics and the metaphorical passing of the torch, which has been a hot topic of discussion in Philadelphia with the likes of Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox and the Jason Peters and the Darren Sproles, that generation of players going the way of the dinosaurs. Only a few of those guys are still here and still have a chance to make their imprint on the younger generation in Philadelphia. So, on the Up and Adams show yesterday, Kay Adams talked to Darius Slay and Brandon Graham. Darius Slay first said this quote before Brandon Graham later talked. Darius Slay said, I just try to treat everybody with respect, to treat everybody the same. I try to give everybody the tools or whatever I have to help anybody be great. Brandon Graham would then follow up a later question talking about how he is part of this metaphorical passing of the torch and his role to play in Philadelphia in year 15. He said a quote that it gave me the chills. He said, you can always bring somebody along and help get them to where they want to go. Listen to that. Listen to that message. These veterans get it. They understand that the guys before them, when Fletcher Cox talks, it was about Trent Cole. When BG talked, it was about Trent Cole. When guys like Jason Kelsey talked, it was about the John Doran bosses of the world and the Evan Mathises and, heck, the Trey Thomases, the guys that came before him, even the guys that he played with. When you put on that Eagles helmet, you understand what this culture is. That it's not a given. It's it's an honor to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's the bigger honor to take what you learned in your time in Philadelphia and pass it on to the next generation of player. Because the times that there was turmoil, where the Eagles kind of lost themselves, Look at those 
Chip Kelly years, after Andy Reid was gone, when that team lost its way, when you looked at that, the guys wearing the jersey, and you're like, that, that's just guys wearing eagle green. They're, they're not Philadelphia Eagles. But go and talk about the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles, or the 2022 Eagles, and the guys that wear that jersey. And it's just, it's embedded in the players you talk about. And why why I love the Jim Johnson years is because the Jeremiah Trotters and the Brian Dawkins and the Lito Shepherds and the the rest of you could you could mention every player on that defense and a large majority of the guys on the offense. They embraced the culture of Philadelphia. They embraced what it was to wear Eagle Green. They embraced what this city was. A blue collar city that knew that their fans were not going to stand for BS. That the only way to get them to cheer for you was to lace up your bootstraps, not give a crap about what anybody's saying about you, and go win football games. And who did that better than Jason Kelsey? Who did that better than Fletcher Cox? Who does that better than Brandon Graham? Who does that better than these guys like Slay? Even Slay, somebody who wasn't here his entire career. He only was here since we started hosting the show. He gets it. He understands that message. It's so important. And it could it could sound corny. You could say, oh, yeah, look at this guy just preaching about culture and, and just rah-rah, just a, just a hype guy. I mean... In Philadelphia, the seasons when they do have that team culture and that identity, and there is that city feel, and the Philadelphia is behind them, and they get what it means to play hard and to not just take what you're given for granted. Those are the best Philadelphia Eagles teams to root for. That's why 2017 was so easy to root for, even though they didn't have the best talent in the world, they had a bunch of guys that got it. They have a bunch of guys that if they walk into Novacare Complex tomorrow, everybody in that building is going to buy them a drink. They walk anywhere into Philadelphia, anybody's going to, anywhere you go, anybody's going to buy them a drink. And you're, you're, we're not just talking about the the top of the top. I mean, the, the Isaac Sayamalus don't go to Pittsburgh and get that contract they do if they don't learn the Jeff Stoutland Philadelphia Eagle way. It it's just a testament to these guys to understand that they have a role to be very good football players, which they have been. But now their time, which BG, it's coming to an end this year. Darius Slay probably still has a couple good years, but in their last good years, help the next guy, pay it forward. So that Jalen Carter does this same thing 10 years from now. And Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith, and Dallas got these guys learn from that prior generation and continue to pass the torch. Because the best teams, they're led by the players. It's not led by the coach. It's led by the guys. When you know that when you put that helmet on, what it means, that's why I love this podcast, why I love this team, to hear those quotes, to hear those guys get the message. That's paying it forward. That's passing the torch. That's why you should feel confident about this next generation. They have the talent. It's just getting on the same page. It's not making the mistakes of last year. It's buying in, playing for the guy next to you, and just playing Eagle ball. That's what it's all about. And when we talk about Eagles football, we talk about running the damn ball. And yes, Saquon will be running it, but we got to talk about the guys who are going to take the burden off of his shoulders. Will Shipley, Kenneth Gainwell, don't go anywhere as we continue on this episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. This episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. Here in Denver, Colorado, it's going to be 90 degrees. 
for at least the next 10 days plus. I'm looking at tickets on game time to go down to Coors Field to take in some Rockies games. There's nothing better going down there with my wife and some friends, taking in the game, seeing a sunset. And if you want to do that as well at your local ballpark or take in a football game as the NFL approaches, go and download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everyone. Welcome on back to this Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And if you've been listening to the Lockdown Podcast Network by now, you probably know, but if you haven't heard and you're still watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, and you're sick of having to turn down the volume with all of that shouting, well, you should make the switch to Locked On Sports today. Well, what is Locked On Sports today? It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, and as we continue along on this Wednesday edition of the show, another day closer to the preseason, seeing the Eagles actually go against another team. They got into pads yesterday. Today, they had a walkthrough behind closed doors. Tomorrow is open practice at Lincoln Financial Field. I wish I could get out there, go and enjoy it if you have the opportunity to see the 2024 Philadelphia Eagles in all of their glory for the first time in the link. And one guy you're probably going to be looking for is Saquon Barkley. Well, he's been the talk of the town, but there are a couple guys behind him that are going to be part of this offensive equation. Kenny Gainwell and rookie Will Shipley. Now, how do they fit into all of this? Well, if you look at what Saquon Barkley is and you just look at him in a vacuum, you're saying this guy should get 300 plus touches this year and not all of them just handing him the ball on power A gap and B gap runs and having him get smoked by line Mike linebackers play after play. You want to get him involved in this Kellen Moore motion-based offense, which is going to operate on finding space, getting him laterally, taking advantage of these option routes against less athletic guys that are going to be defending him and taking advantage of his generational skill set that he has. But he's not going to be in the ballgame every single snap. Because if you want to get the best out of Saquon Barkley, he has to be healthy. We've seen him on past Giants teams get pretty dinged up at times. The best reliability is availability. How do you keep Saquon available? Well, you get him involved in the pass game. You can get more guys involved in the run game, which can take the burden off of him. But who would those players be? Well, you can use your wide receivers and Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and hopefully you better screen game and get them involved in some motion in the backfield and get them some easy touches. But if you were going to just say, we need to rotate Saquon out of the lineup, who is the next guy up? Well, it's going to be Kenny Gainwell more than likely if you're going to just hand the ball off to him and say, go get us three yards. Now, what Kenny Gainwell and Will Shipley also bring to this offense is that athleticism element, is that pass-catching element, which both of them excelled in in college. Kenny Gainwell, you look at how Memphis running backs are treated. They're essentially pseudo-wide receivers out of the backfield. Will Shipley, what was he at Clemson? Well, he was a guy, not somebody that you are going to just put the bell cow on and say, ring the bell. 
get me three yards. We're going to lean on the back of you every single down. No, you're going to have to take advantage of his skill set. And what is that? His short area quickness, his ability to read leverage against defenders. That's that lacrosse IQ, that ability to use his feet in the open space, his ability to get up in the grill of a defender, use their leverage against him, and be on the button and be in the area where your quarterback needs you to be, to be a smart football player, to be somebody who can be relied on as that sixth or seventh guy in the rotation when it comes to being a pass catcher. Britton Covey said it in his press conference, I believe on Tuesday. He said that when you're not one of these guys who is going to be, I believe he used the word ball centric and somebody who gets a vast majority of the snaps and of the target share, You have to be effective in those moments. Well, that's what Will Shipley and Kenny Gainwell have to be. They have to be effective when when their number is called. Will Shipley will probably get more opportunities to get the ball in his hand because he is also going to be used as a returner. More than likely, he discussed in his press conference on Tuesday the new rules of the return game, him and Britton Covey talked about it at length. If you're a special team sicko like me, I highly suggest you go listen to the audio of those. But they talked about how, and I believe Will Shipley said it, that running the new kickoff is essentially like running a whole field inside zone play. That's good to hear, that he understands that his role to make a difference starts with special teams which is going to allow him to be on the 53, which is going to allow him to be probably one of the three running backs that they keep. I can't see them keeping anybody beyond that right now unless one of the guys behind them pops in the preseason. But Will Shipley, just like Saquon isn't going to be a guy that you hand the ball off to 300 times, run it down the A gap, run it down the B gap, you're not going to use Will Shipley in that regard either. You're going to use him to his strengths. You're going to use Kenny Gainwell to his strength. Where the Eagles kind of got away from Kenny Gainwell's strength the last year and a half or so by making him that 12 to 15 touch type of guy and all of those touches came in the run game in inside zone. None of them were really stretch runs that used his speed and athleticism on the edge to just hit the corner and go. That's not his strength. The way that you use Will Shipley and Kenny Gainwell to benefit Saquon Barkley, to be a balance to Saquon Barkley, is to all use them in the same manner, is to make them interchangeable. Because the best Eagles teams, in my opinion, that we have seen, are when they could rotate multiple guys in the backfield that you could rely on to be used in multiple different manners, both the run and pass game, and defenses don't know what's coming. If you look at 2017, you looked at LeGarrette Blunt and you're saying, okay, he has a strength. He's an inside runner, somebody we can hand the ball off to 20 times a game. But maybe he can't do that for a full season. Well, let's go and get a compliment to him in Jay Ajayi, who does a lot of similar things. But then they also had Corey Clement, who was a really good pass catcher when the other two weren't really the best best pass catchers in the world. But they didn't restrict them completely from being pass catchers when they needed to be. And vice versa with Corey Clement. He wasn't solely a third down back, somebody that they just threw out there to go and catch the football. He was also used in their inside run game when he needed to be. LeGarrette, to an extent, was. Jay Ajayi, to an extent, was. Now, in 2024, all of these guys kind of mirror each other. They're very good athletes who work well with space, work well against leverage, are smart football players, shouldn't really be relied on to carry the ball 30 times a game, and probably will do best in a rotational type of setting. Now, you're probably saying with Saquon, do you want him to be a rotational running back? No, but he's also going to be used as a slot receiver. 
He's also going to be used in two back sets where he's used as the passing threat rather than the guy who is the zone read type of option. But all of these guys kind of mirror each other's games. They all are going to be a good balance to one another. And they balance well with what they don't have on the rest of the offense. Because if you look at the rest of the guys around this lineup, we'll see how Anaya Smith starts to come into this offense over the next year and Johnny Wilson. But it looks like it's going to be A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, a combination of Dallas Goddard and these guys out of the backfield, which are really going to lead the way in the pass game until they can find a reliable weapon at wide receiver three. If John Ross starts to do something in his NFL career and Paris Campbell can rejuvenate that long game space type of player under Kellen Moore right now, I would put my eggs in the young guy basket out of the backfield with the addition of Kellen Moore with the rotational setting that Nick Sirianni has been used to at the running back position. The best way that these guys fit in is to just fit them all into the same mold. I think it's evident that Howie Roseman is clear in what he wants at this position moving forward. Guys that are going to bring special teams element to this backfield. A Will Shipley doesn't get drafted in the year 2018 for the Philadelphia Eagles. But with the new rules, well, you go out and draft him. Is Saquon Barkley getting paid by the Philadelphia Eagles 10 years ago? I don't know. But with this market inefficiency, they went out and signed him. And now with Kellen Moore, I think it's the best of both worlds. It's a perfect mashup. Scheme, talent, they all start to blend together. These three guys should be in for a big year. Don't forget about the two behind Saquon Barkley because they're all going to be in a rotation. Their games all kind of mirror each other. I mean, they're you look at Saquon, you look at Will Shipley, you look at Kenneth Gamewell, you say, no way these guys play similarly. But go look at the tape. But at the end of the day, when their number is called, whether it's in the run game, whether it's in the pass game, they have to be effective. And talk about effective. If you want to win gold, You have to be at the top of your game. And we're going to be talking about flag football in the Olympics as we finish up this Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. So don't go anywhere. This episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Here at Lockdown, we love sports. We love them so much that we never want them to stop. But as the playoffs are over, we get fewer games to enjoy. And the sports aren't sportsing like we want them to. But FanDuel lets us stay in sports mode whenever we want. All we have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime we are in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boot or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. The Olympics are going on right now. The NFL is right around the corner. We're going to have all four major sports before we know it. So head to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and the entire Locked On Podcast Network. All right, my Locked On Eagles every dayers. Gino Camilleri here wrapping up this Wednesday edition of the show. And as we do every Wednesday, we hop outside of the nest and we have a take about football as a whole on what's the word Wednesday. Usually it has to do with the current state of the NFL. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about the New York Giants and the whole Saquon Barkley situation. But I'm going to do a little ghost of Christmas future type of scenario. And I thought it was very on topic to talk about the Olympics and how in four years on U.S. soil, we're going to see flag football five on five as an actual legitimate sport played in the Olympics with multiple countries participating with their chance to lift gold, silver, and bronze in the sport that we talk about five days a week here on LOE. Now, is it tackle football, the sport that we watch with 11 on 11? No. It's going to be five on five. The squads are going to be made up of 15 players. 
But I believe the NFL has a huge opportunity in the year 2028 to follow the mold of what Adam Silver is doing with the NBA currently and to not follow in the footsteps of what Gary Bettman has done with hockey and NHL players over the last few Olympic years. Right now, football is expanding globally, and the NFL more than any brand of football. You see the initiatives that they're putting in place currently with assigning territories to each respective NFL team for them to engage fans and to engage scouting and to promote the game of football. Well, in the year 2028, eyes from all around the globe are going to be on this sport. No, not the NFL, but the game of football on American soil. And what better place to spread the game to make it a more globally recognized sport and to make these guys, these players, who in the U.S., you go anywhere down the street, you recognize Tom Brady, you recognize Jalen Hurts, you recognize these guys. Go across the globe, outside of the probably top 1% of the NFL, these aren't household names. You take Steph Curry and LeBron James and do what the NFL is currently doing, or the NBA, excuse me, is currently doing with this Olympic cycle, putting the biggest stars on display, allowing them to go and play overseas and have this quote unquote second dream team. That's how you promote the sport. You let these icons, these guys who are bigger than the game to an extent, go and play in front of the world to continue to promote this sport and to continue to promote the growth. Look at what basketball was 20 years ago. You look at the first time LeBron James is on the Olympic team. They're blowing teams out of the water. It's not even competitive. Now, the parity around the globe, it's closer than ever. The U.S. had to send their best players because they knew that on this global stage, they couldn't send a B or a C team and compete. They had to send their A team. Now, what does that do for the guys that they are sending? It just continues to grow their brand. It continues to grow the brand of the teams that they play for. It continues to grow the brand of the NBA as a whole. Now, I mentioned Gary Bettman. Let's take a step back in time. You go back to the Olympics when Sidney Crosby rip the heart out of Team USA when it was in Canada. And the game of hockey was probably never brighter on a global scale. Yes, now the NHL, you have stars that are going on paces of the great Wayne Gretzky and Connor McDavid and other players like Austin Matthews who are breaking all sorts of records. But... Gary Bettman kind of keeps them in a shell, not allowing them to go play in the Olympics. And you look at the MLB, baseball has its World Baseball Classic, but that's it. Hockey, they have the IIHF World Championships each year, but that's it. They don't go and compete in the Olympics anymore. The Olympics are going to be watched by more people than anybody in any other respective sport because all of these countries have access to it because they have teams and players being represented. Now with the NFL, what would be the worst case scenario in my opinion? It would be the commissioner, Roger Goodell, who it will more than likely be at the time, to say nobody from the NFL can go and play. It's going to be only college players. And the NFL is going to just completely cut ties like the NHL did with the Olympics. But the best thing they can do is say, all right, in four years from now, realistically, we aren't going to have three preseason games. We'll probably have two preseason games. We could push training camp back a week or so, and we are going to send the best current 15 NFL players to Los Angeles to represent our sport and put it on display and say, this is the top of the mountain, and this is where the rest of the world has to get to. 
much like that Team USA 20 years ago and the original Dream Team did all those years ago, where they set the bar and they continue to raise the bar year after year until parity start to kick in. Now, why is that beneficial for the NFL? Because if you look at the bounds of where football is, it's starting to get global recognition. The league is starting to open up to global scouting to an extent. You see these player pathways, the Jordan Mayaladas of the world. But you look at the body types of these players that they're trying to get. Look at Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji, and South Africa with some of these rugby players that they're putting out. Why can't you go and scout these places? And why can't those countries start to put those athletes into football? Well, if there's a path forward via the Olympics and some of these players who, hey, you throw Tyree Kill out of there and some cornerback from France is all of a sudden lighting things up. Well, now you're starting to open eyes up to other scouts and other avenues for players to make their name in the sport. But to gatekeep football and to say, no, the NFL is our thing. Nobody from the Olympics is going over there. We're not going to send Patrick Mahomes. We're not going to send Justin Jefferson and the next crop of wide receivers and the best tight end in the time who's probably somebody named George Kittle or who knows, Travis Kelsey will probably be at the top of his game. But I also do believe if they had to go the retired player route, they could still make an unbelievable team. Because I was looking up the rules, and in international flag football, you're allowed one blitz per four downs. Now, let's say Tom Brady, who at the time will be probably be over 50, if that's correct. You only allow a team to blitz him one time, give him all the time in the world to throw it to, I don't know, who, who's going to be one of the better retired wide. I mean, Chad Ochocinco, for goodness sake, could come out of retirement, or Terrell Owens is still in great playing shape. Like, who knows? Who knows the, the avenue they could go? But to get back to a more serious note, in 2028, the NFL has a legitimate pathway to push this sport to a global scale that will continue to expand the bounds of their salary cap, expand the bounds of potential expansion talk, future of where they can play games. They're already in multiple countries. Who's to say they don't play a game in Australia? Who's to say they don't play a game in China or India? Who knows? They, they could play a game on the African continent for all we know. But the worst thing they can do is to go down the avenue of the worst commissioner in the big four of Gary Bettman and not allow the best stars to go and play on a national scale. Now, is there a downside to this? Of course. Could somebody get injured? Yes. But do the benefits outweigh the negatives? I think when you look at money and how money talks, if they can continue to get more eyes on the sport outside of this country, Roger Goodell, Jerry Jones, the power players in the league are going to continue to want to push the bounds of the sport and it will benefit everybody because if the salary cap goes up, it means contracts are going to go up, which means more people are going to want to get involved in the sport, which means more competition, which means more potential to talk about great football, which we do five days a week here at the Locked On Eagles podcast. And thank you for joining us as you do each and every day tomorrow. It's not just my birthday. It's Eagles open practice at Lincoln Financial Field. If you haven't already got your tickets to go check out this team, Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, that high-flying offense, a new defense, go and grab your tickets to catch the open practice. We will be back with more shows to finish up this week, talking about training camp as we march on towards the first preseason game. And as always, thank you for downloading 
watching, subscribing the show wherever you get the podcast and making us your first listen each and every day. And for your second listen, go and enjoy the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. The draft dudes Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs take you inside the front office, making you a smarter NFL fan every single day. Stay up to date on training camp and positional battles as the season draws near. Locked On NFL Scouting is available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And that'll do it for me, Gino Camilleri, signing off as I always do. Fly, Eagles, fly.